And it's time for business news with Richard Southern. And Richard's already hard enough to buy a new vehicle, and it could soon become even more difficult. Yeah, there's a big strike, Melissa, going on south of the border. Good to see you. Happy Friday. The United Auto Workers at uh, GM, Ford, and Stellantis factories in the U.S. went on strike this morning. Uh, almost one in ten of America's unionized auto workers are currently on the picket lines here this evening trying to put pressure on the Detroit Three to raise wages. It's a situation that's likely to reverberate right here in Ontario. After all, almost half of the auto parts made here in Ontario are shipped to the assembly plants of the United States, some of which are not operational right now. City News caught up with Unifor National President to talk about this. Currently, the locations they've targeted ha do not have an impact on Canadian facilities at the best that we can assess, mm -hmm. but this could change. I mean, if, if their targets increase, it could very well have a, an impact on Canadian operations for sure. The other big side of the story is that Canadian auto workers could also be going on strike. Uh, they have voted for a strike mandate, and this coming Monday, there's a strike deadline for 5,600 unionized workers at Ford Canada. This is big news. The automotive manufacturing industry employ, employs, Melissa, 135,000 Canadians, many of them right here in Ontario. Okay, now the Canadian newspaper industry is taking another big hit. Yeah, this is really not good at all. Uh, the latest blow to an already battered and bruised uh, journalism sector in Canada was announced this afternoon. The Toronto Star publisher Nordstar will put its regional newspaper business called Metroland into bankruptcy in a move that will see more than 70 weekly local papers converted to digital-only publications. It'll also put 605 workers out of a job. Metroland being put into bankruptcy, Nordstar says, because of, quote, unsustainable financial losses stemming from the changing preferences of consumers and advertisers. It means the end of weekly newspapers in many cities, including Barrie and Oakville, the company eliminating two-thirds of its workforce, including 68 journalists. These papers, Melissa, do a lot of great work in terms of local news, and this is a, a very uh, a troubling story indeed. Yeah, terrible blow indeed. Now, Starbucks is searching for ways to become more sustainable, and that could mean changes to how our daily coffee is served. Would you believe they're talking about getting rid of the iconic Starbucks cup? Does no. that surprise you? It kind of does, yeah. It's, it's, it's so symbolic. It is, and it's free advertising for the yeah, company, sure. too. But Starbucks says by 2030, they want to move away completely from disposable cups, which, of course, represent a big portion of the company's overall waste and greenhouse gas. The ultimate idea, Starbucks says, is a cup that still has the symbol on it, but that's totally reusable, where, you know, you buy it once and you bring it back and you use it. Whether or not Starbucks is going to meet this goal is a matter of debate. They've uh, met uh, or created other sustainability goals over the years, like wanting to have the current cups 100% recyclable, which they haven't met. But it's really interesting to hear that from Starbucks, that the iconic cup could go the way of the dodo.